Alrighty. Well, hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Monterey Bay Aquarium here live all across the internet where you can find us. We should be going live right now over on our Twitch, over on YouTube, over on Periscope and Twitter, and also there on Facebook. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this view here from the back deck of the Monterey Bay Aquarium. We are looking at the great tide pool and we are watching a king tide, the last king tide of the season, washing in here to the aquarium, reclaiming our great tide pool and making the Monterey Bay Aquarium effectively an extension of the Monterey Bay right now. So good morning, everybody. My name is Patrick. I work at the aquarium on the social media team. And uh, yeah, joining you live right now here from the back deck for one of those King Tides. We were live a little bit earlier in the year, or well, I guess late last year, uh, a few months ago, when we had some of these King Tides rolling through. The King Tides, for those of you who are not familiar, are the largest tidal swings of the year here in our area. It's not really a scientific term, it's more a description of these are the rulers of all the tides. The highest tides, the lowest tides are happening right now. And this is gonna be the last little bit here of the king tides for the season. And we'll be seeing you again in November and December for the next set of king tides. They tend to happen here in the winter time here in California along the central coast. And um, these king tides specifically are happening here north of Point Conception. So apologies to all of our friends that are down there, Santa Barbara, uh, on into LA, San Diego area. You do not have these king tides here at the moment, but we do. Um, and uh, don't ask me exactly why. I'm not entirely sure why we get them and not further down the coast. But here we are right now. Let me see. Oh, we got a whole bunch of people here that are in the chat. Good morning, everybody. So many folks that are tuning in right now all across YouTube and Facebook and Twitch. Thank you so much, everybody, for being there. Oh, goodness, we got some folks joining in there from the UK as well. Awesome, good stuff. Well, thank you for being here. So um, just a little bit. So we're here off the back deck of the aquarium. If I rotate the camera a little bit, you can see um, that we've got, actually, there's Mackenzie there on the other side. You might be able to make her out. She's currently making sure that our wave crash exhibit is looking good. Of course, Mackenzie um, is over there. Behind me is the sea otter exhibit. And here in front of us is the Monterey Bay Aquarium's Great Tide Pool. This is actually the outflow of the aquarium's water. We pump in about 1,500 gallons of water here into the aquarium every single day. And here, actually, let me zoom in. You should be able to see out there in the distance beyond the pigeons that are currently enjoying their time here at the aquarium without anybody around. Um, but you might be able to see behind some of those birds there, those yellow intake buoys. Let me see if I can bring my finger. Woo! So right over there, there's one yellow buoy. Then there's another yellow buoy right over there. Those are the intake pipes for the Monterey Bay Aquarium seawater, which then goes into this pump house directly across from me. And there's the pump house right there. And then everything down here below us is that great tide pool, the outflow for the water of the aquarium. And the outflow of the aquarium water usually is pouring out from this great tide pool and rejoining the ocean. But right now what we're looking at, and actually it is 8.53, I believe 8.54 was our time for the highest tide, that actual king tide happening right now, where the ocean level is 6.7 feet above the zero tide line, the mean tide line. Now, a high tide in this area is around five and a half feet. Um, so a couple, less than two meters, but you know, quite, quite substantial amount of, of rise there. But these king tides, they can go all the way up almost to seven feet. And that tidal swing is really pretty incredible. If you come back here to the back deck of the aquarium in just about six hours, you'll see this entire uh, pool in front of you reclaimed from the ocean and the water out there seven feet lower than where it currently is, even eight feet lower than where it currently is, revealing this vast intertidal landscape, and in particular, some of the animals that are not used to being out of the water at all. These king tides are the times where we have those lowest tides as well, and so you're gonna have a whole bunch of algal life and other critters that are gonna be exposed to the air for a short amount of time. It's pretty extreme for those animals. And then, of course, the rest of the intertidal animals 
are completely submerged if they're not used to being underwater. So those extreme animals that are living there and, and, and algae and other organisms that are living there in that inner tidal, this is some of their biggest testing. This is some of the most extreme conditions that they're gonna face throughout the year because some of the animals that are more land animals than they are aquatic are gonna be covered by the ocean. Some of the animals that are far more aquatic than they are terrestrial are going to be revealed to the air and all those complications there. So pretty extreme right now. If you have any friends that are, you know, hermit crabs in the intertidal zone, uh, check in on them. They're going through a lot today. So, oh, let me see here. Going to go and see what we've got questions in the chat. Oh, what are the stairs used for? So those stairs, your boy Splendens over there on Twitch, uh, those are the stairs that we would use to access the Great Tide Pool, not only for maintenance, but also during the summertime for our Underwater Explorers program, where kids 8 to 13 can come directly off of Cannery Row, put on a dry suit, and go and snorkel scuba here in the tide pool. Thankfully, we don't have the king tides during the summertime. This is purely a winter phenomenon here in our area, and so we don't have to worry about kids washing out to sea uh, quite so much um, during the Underwater Explorers program. Also, that is the staircase that we would use for the Day of Discovery program, where uh, kids with disabilities are able to come over and uh, float around in our great tide pool and go surface scuba diving as well. So um, lots of fun stuff happening here in this great tide pool. During the summer times, shout out to anybody out there who might be watching who was a part of the Underwater Explorers program there back in the day. Seen any whales recently is the question. Yeah, we often see some whales off here, off the back deck. Um, oh, a sea lion actually just went by. Um, not a whale, but a fun marine mammal sighting there. And uh, yeah, we've seen some gray whales go by. We've seen humpback, blue whales from the back deck of the aquarium. So a whole lot of fun there. Um, for those of you who are wondering, no, no updates on when we're gonna be reopening. We take our cues from the state and the county. So a lot of things have to go very well when it comes to the coronavirus here and how we're responding to that and vaccinations, all that stuff. So no, no firm timeline, but hey, if you give us a follow, give us a subscribe, uh, you'll be able to find out when we let everybody know on our social media feeds. Um, okay, yes, so questions here. What causes the king tides? Well, we're currently looking at a really amazing situation. So what I didn't really know before I started looking into the king tides is kind of how like the tides generally work. So if you think about the tides, they're caused by the moon and the sun all working together to pull on the oceans, to pull on uh, their, their combined gravity is pulling on that ocean. So the moon is really the most responsible for uh, the tides that we have in our, in, on our planet because even though the moon is incredibly small compared to the sun, it's a lot closer to the earth. So, the moon's gravity is what's tugging on the ocean all the time, and the sun is also involved in that. And so when the sun and the moon are pulling on the ocean in the same direction, you have what's known as a spring tide, meaning it's springing forward. And then when you have the moon and the sun at 90 degree angles to each other, you're getting what's known as a neap tide, so where the sun and the moon are kind of canceling each other out and that's when you kind of have a flat curve to the tides. Kind of goes up, kind of goes down, but there's not really this big swing of high and low tides. So then when you have a spring tide situation, the sun and the moon pulling on the ocean in the same direction, what well, you can also have this time of year, because this is the time of year that the planet is actually closest to the sun, you're gonna end up having the sun's gravity be amplified and thus cause higher tides, and then the moon right now is also at its closest to the Earth, which means that you're gonna have an extra strong lunar pull. So the sun and the moon are not only closer to the Earth right now, they're also pulling in the same direction, and that is causing these exceptionally high spring tides. That's what the king tides are, is these exceptionally uh, large spring tides. And what's really cool about that is that right now you're looking at the future of sea level rise. So you might know that climate change is going on around the planet and we talk a lot about different things that might be affecting the ocean. It's getting warmer, which is affecting currents, affecting wildlife. There's also more acidity in the ocean because of the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere going into the ocean, being absorbed by that huge, uh, by the huge surface area of the ocean. That's causing the ocean to be more acidic. But one of the things you maybe haven't thought too much about and something that I certainly was learning a lot more about is that 
when you heat up the ocean, it's going to expand. As you know, if you heat something up, it's going to expand in volume. And so when you heat up water, it does expand in volume. And if you heat up the ocean, which is the largest feature on our planet, even just a few millimeters here and there across the entire ocean basin ends up resulting in a pretty significant rise of sea level. So this right now is an exceptionally high tide, but think about this view right now as being your average high tide going forward, your standard eh, three and a half foot, oh, it's kind of high tide, not really high tide, it's, 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 it's a fine tide. This king tide basically will get demoted to a peasant tide, is that the, is that the term, a plebeian tide? Don't quote me on that. I, I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to come up with uh, have to come up with what the demotion there ends up being for the king tide. But you're looking at right now the future of the coastline here under sea level rise. Obviously, here at the Monterey Bay Aquarium, we're right there on the ocean, so this is really concerning uh, for all of us here at the aquarium. Thinking about what does our what does our aquarium look like going forward as the sea level is rising, and then we also got to be thinking about okay, imagine this high tide, and then you have the huge storms that we've been having with maybe an extra 10 foot storm surge. Well, the aquarium would start having the water lapping into the exhibit hall. So think about what you're looking at right now as a really cool natural event, but also you're looking at the future of your average high tide under sea level rise. And that's where you folks all come in. If you are heading over to the California coast during any king tide event, you happen to snap that photo of that coastline. You can upload it to the California King Tides project. You can also tag it hashtag King Tides and that'll help the California Coastal Commission get a whole bunch of information about what those high tides and then therefore the future of our coastline is looking like. So that's what we're doing here at the aquarium today. We're showing you off that amazing high tide, this king tide that occurs right now. But we're also thinking, okay, what if this is the future of our back deck? What does that look like for the aquarium? What do we have to think about going forward? Might change some things with underwater explorers, might change a few things about our intake pipes, about our, about our amphitheater here. So, Anyway, lots to think about there with the King Tides. All right, well, let me see. I've been talking a long time, not looking at the questions. Let me dive back in here and see what the folks are asking about. Uh, let's see. Um, is the aquarium still allowing volunteers to help in the future? Absolutely. Right now we've got a little bit of a smaller crew here to keep uh, make sure everyone's uh, staying safe out here. Um, we got something interesting going on over on the other side. It looks like uh, a gull was taking a bath and maybe grabbed a little bit of food over there. Interesting. Um, so how often does this king tide happen in the winter? Daily, weekly? It happens monthly, so the moon is kind of largely responsible for that. So head over to the California King Tides Project website and you'll find out more about the king tides that are happening in your area going forward. So. Uh, usually happens in November, December, and January here at the at the aquarium. Um, oh, something else to think about, you know, when we when it comes to the tides, the moon and the sun are constantly pulling on the ocean. As you probably know, the Earth rotates around itself in one day. That's why we call it a day. But the moon rotates around the Earth in about 28 days. So that means that the moon is moving a lot slower than the earth is spinning. And that's important because the moon is pulling on that oceanic bulge. It's creating this huge standing wave between itself and the earth and then the sun is doing the same thing. So the earth is actually spinning through this tidal bulge, which is why we end up having in our area two high tides, two low tides happening there because the earth is spinning. And as we arrive into the bulge, the tide comes in and as we rotate out of the bulge, the tide goes out. But you can kind of think of we're arriving at the tide and then we're leaving the tide. We're leaving it behind as we keep spinning through it. So that's why you end up having those two high tides, two low tides that are occurring uh, in our area is that the tide is kind of this standing mass of water that the earth spins through. Kind of a fun thing to think about. So right now, as we're hurtling through space, rotating around ourselves, we are currently in the lunar bulge. There we go. All right. Well, hey, with that, everybody, that's pretty much all we had to, had to point out here at the, at the aquarium for today. This is the king tide. This is the highest high tide of the year. You're looking at the future of sea level rise here in front of you. And with that, I'm going to sign off. We've got a few low battery warnings that are happening. Not exactly sure why, but we're going to sign off for right now. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. And uh, we hope to see you again soon in person 
at the Monterey Bay Aquarium whenever we can safely reopen and hope that your friends and family are staying safe out there. They're taking care of yourself and hope you enjoy taking a look at the King Tides. And if you're down by the coast today, snap that photo, hashtag King Tides, go to the California King Tides Project and upload it. Help us visualize the future of our coastline with climate change. With that, everybody, my name is Patrick. Thanks for watching and we will see you again soon at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Thanks, everybody.